Hello, Utube. Today we're going to be talking about the Heesey Base. The Heesey Base is the biome that comes after the Snowy Depths. It is another biome that is kind of very little reward for the risk, but at least the wands that are there are a bit better than we've been seeing recently uh, through the coal pits and through Snowy Depths. Let's take a look at some of the enemies. We have the Shotgunner, the Gunner, the Grenadier. Then we have the Sniper which is the red dot guy, the red line guy that shoots at you from afar, does a lot of damage. We have the executive who drops other hisi when you... The healer who shoots healing bolts, you can intercept them to get healed. We have the coward who teleports enemies towards you, any local enemies. He can't hurt you, but he can teleport. We have the tank, which is the one that shoots the bullets at you. We also have a couple other versions of tanks. We have the missile tank, which shoots guided missiles, which home in on you. And we also have the laser tank, which shoots obviously lasers. Then we have everybody's favorite, the friendly drone who shoots these white lasers that are really annoying, but he's not bad. You can avoid him. And of course, the turret, who is basically just a wimp. All right. So when we first enter into the Heesey base, you can already see right here, we're challenged by an executive. If you have a good enough wand, then you can kind of take these guys apart pretty easy. But when you kill him, he drops a whole bunch of other Heesey that you have to fight. The Heesey base is, of course, going to be populated by mostly Heesey. Now, there's a lot of them. There's also a lot of tricks and turns and corners. There's also a lot of hazards that are here. One of the major hazards I'll show you over here is the propane tanks. These little purple tanks. Try to blow them up from a safe distance and get away from that mist because that mist does a lot of damage over time to you. So stay out of that stuff. For EC base has a lot of structures in it, some treasure vaults, which are going to be surrounded by metal. So you're going to want a good form of digging like Lumi bolts. Uh, there's also some rare structures that spawn. I'll show you one of them in a second. It is uh, this one here, which spawns an Uko Skeevy, which is that electricity stone. There's also a wand in here that is a relatively decent wand. As you can see, another thing that we talked about with the Heesey base is all the, the fire that ends up here. A lot of the denizens of the Heesey base leak oil. And that oil will catch on fire. So fire immunity is a great thing to have if you're going to be going to Heesey Base. Fire immunity is one of the best ones. Pick it up as early as you can because almost every place that you go, there's going to be some form of fire that you've got to get away from. Or if like me, you have a little bit of healing. But yeah, you can see this wand. It's a relatively decent wand. This doesn't spawn very often. I just kind of like the, the tree shape. It's pretty damn cool. There's a few other structures in here, like the kitchen and the bar. You'll notice those as you come along. But one of these structures that I want to show you that is always there, either on all the way to the left hand side near the top or all the way to the right hand side near the top, you're going to find a wand shop where you can purchase a selection of four spells if you have the gold to do it. The Spells that are there are usually kind of mid-level spells. You might find something good every once in a while, but this is not where we're expecting to find anything like healing or touch of spells or Greek spells, nothing like that. Just your basic stuff that you would find in most shops. I've already carved out a convenient path here just to show you. You head all the way over to the left. Again, here's that wonderful little hut with the wand. If you head just a little bit down, there'll be this cave entrance that will bring you into the spell shop. Again, this is sometimes on the left side, sometimes on the right side. And then just above it, if you dig very carefully, you got to dig carefully because you don't want to break this hourglass thing that's up here. There's the hourglass teleporter to the eye room. If you can fill this with a certain type of potion, you can probably guess what. It will teleport you directly to the eye room. If you can't find a uh, special potion to dump in there. You can dig your way there. It does take a while. You start at the very left of Heesey Base and just dig straight from under the Holy Mountain. Even if the, the, excuse me, even if the hourglass room isn't there, you can dig to the left straight out of that Heesey Base and just keep going at the bottom of the mountain. It's gonna take a long time. I'm gonna show you the whole thing here because honestly, Every time I do this, no matter how good my digging is, I keep doing the, are we there yet? Are we there yet? Are we there yet? And I keep thinking, no, I must have missed it. I must have dug too high or too low. But I promise you, it will be there. Just be patient, keep digging, and you'll eventually get there. You can totally see, even with this awesome loomy drill with ping pong shot, it still takes quite some time. In fact, it's taking so much time, I don't even know what else to talk to you about because it's just, well, you'll see, it's just still further away. Oh my goodness. Almost there. Almost there. 
Oh, just impacted on the surface. No, here it is. This is the, some people call it the eye room. I guess that's a good enough name. I call it secret spell room. You can go in here and look, there's good spells in here. You can find Greek letter spells in here. You can find touch of spells in here. Any type of, I believe any spell that you've unlocked, except for like some of the serious ones that you have to do special quests for. You can also teleport back, but you've got to be really careful when you teleport back because sometimes you'll break the hourglass when you teleport. And watch what happens if you break the hourglass. You're going to trigger an earthquake. You better have a way to get out of there if you do this. Jump down below because it's going to collapse in. Remember, earthquake, when the ceiling falls in, it does a ton of damage. You'll basically be instantly killed if you're... Uh, lucky you might survive with maybe a health point or two. As far as any special enemy behaviors, it's pretty much like snowy depths um, and also coal pits where enemies will tend to cluster together in large groups. And of course, you will get the typical Noita warning when the music starts to get a little louder and starts to pick up. You know that you're going to run into a group. That means back up, get to your safe spot. Always explode these canisters from far away. If you do have good digging like I have here, then yeah, you can kind of shelter yourself and obviously this makes an excellent weapon too. If you don't know what this is, this is Lumi Drill plus Ping Pong uh, Formation. A uh, Ping Pong Formation? I don't know. Ping Pong. You'll know what it is. It's the Ping Pong one. This allows you to basically make a giant lightsaber. It's really good. You have to have a halfway decent one to do it, but still. Anyway. So yeah, you want to drain out these hazards. Try to stay away from ticking damage as much as you can. There's lots of fire. There's lots of the propane gas, which will freeze you in place as well as do damage to you. And there's these electrical wires here that if you don't take care of them easily enough, you'll probably end up shocking yourself. We have these little protection globes that you can hide behind. When you're inside the sphere, it disappears, but you can actually use it kind of as a shield if you back behind it and let it pop back up. Look at all this stuff that's around here. All these hazards. Very lucky for me, I cheated and got myself a bunch of good wands. Just for demonstration, I lost all my footage of the run that I did, unfortunately. So I did do what any self-respecting Noita player de does, and I just cheated. Um, but anyway, you can also find that when those globes, if you blow those globes up, they do cause an electricity hazard. Watch this. If I can, let me see if I can blow one of these. I want to get into a safe spot before I do it. Let me get through here and blow that up well hang on let me destroy these guys first these guys are annoying i really hate the drones all right let me get through here the wand quality in hc base is relatively good it's not as good as jungle jungle has that huge leap in wand quality hc base to me still the wands are underwhelming they they never seem to be as good as i want them to be every once in a while you get something good but jungle seems to be pretty reliable as far as it goes. And I don't find jungle to be as difficult as Heesey Base. It's just my opinion. You need a little bit better damage to deal with jungle. The jungle, to me, it's easier to dig through. There's more space. The enemies, I think, are more predictable. And also, with the extra space, they're easier to avoid. There's less hazards. And the wand quality is just amazing in jungle. In fact, jungle is usually where I like to get to to, to really ramp up my build. The EC base, as you can see, here's another wand. They're okay. They're just decent wands. I mean, these are some that you probably would find in a holy mountain. I mean, granted, they're free when you pick them up, but they're not quite as spectacular as you would think for a base of this difficulty. Okay, there's one other structure that I do want to show you, and that is the anvil. It only comes into play in a couple of situations. One is if you get one of those broken wands. There's another situation that it does also come into play, but I am not going to give that away. That's something that you'll have to find out on your own. But a broken wand, if you can get all the way over to the bottom right hand side of HC base, and it's always at the bottom, it's always on the right hand side, you will find the anvil. Hold on one second, I'll speed this up. Actually, check this out. Watch that. See that electrical charge, how it goes through the metal? That's what I wanted you to see. If you blow up anything electrical and it hits the metal and you're standing on it, you're going to be in some serious trouble. So you got to watch out. Anytime you see something sparking and about to explode, get off of anything metal inside of Heesey Base. Actually, anywhere you see that, you want to get off of anything metal. But especially in Heesey Base, get off the metal, get somewhere safe where it's not touching you, or else you will get stunned in place and take a ton of damage. 
speaking of sides, one of my main strategies for getting through these more difficult areas, especially if I'm low on health or if I don't have as much power as I want, stick to the side with the extremely dense rock. You can do the right hand side, the left hand side, whichever you think you need to get through. That means you'll always have a spot to your back that is clear of enemies, a place that you know there's nobody behind you. Now, of course, the reverse of that is also true. You have nowhere to back up, but you'll only have to clear one side of enemies. You don't have to worry about anybody sneaking up. You don't have to worry about suddenly there's a double uh, pack of enemies honing in on you and you can pretty much slide down the sides to get to where you need to be. OK, here's the anvil. This is right where you're going to throw the broken wand. Now, one thing I will warn you about with the broken wand is that when you throw it, it does fire off a whole bunch of missiles. So what you're going to want to do or actually sometimes it's missiles, sometimes it's other spells, sometimes even more dangerous spells than that. So what you're going to want to do is you're going to want to stand right over here, throw the wand over there and then duck under here. That way you're safe. What are some of the general strategies for the Heesey base? Well, you're going to want to get yourself informed about the enemies. This is where we have to start paying attention to things like their resistances, their damage types, and the things that we can do to offset their damage or to do more damage to them. It's very important that you go and check that information out. I'm not going to just give that to you because I really do think it's good for you to go to the wiki and really do your homework on these enemies. But in general, I can tell you that with the turrets, well, not the turrets, the tanks, excuse me, with the tanks, one of your best strategies is going to be to attack them from above from a protected position. So if you can, if you've got decent digging, especially like Lumi drill, and you can drill just a small hole through and aim straight down at one of the tanks to take it out where it cannot shoot you back, that's great. If you get into a fist fight like this, one of the things that you got to remember is if you have the ability to move, the tank will always try to track you so you can move faster than it tracks. So if you're moving straight up over it, it will be shooting behind you or still tracking you and not shooting. It won't be able to catch up to you so you can get away from its aim faster than it can catch up with you. That's the same thing with the missiles. But the one thing you have to be careful with the missile tanks is that the missile is homing. So what you're going to want to do is make sure that you're attacking it from a position where you can jump behind a barrier. So you're going to attack, 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 and then jump and get behind a barrier. These drones that you see that I keep blowing up, these flying drones, they are. Oh, hey, check this guy out. This is the teleport guy I wanted to show you. So he teleports guys too. Check it out. He teleports enemies too. Now, of course, I've got a fake run going here, so I, I can just blow stuff up. In your case, you're going to want to get rid of that guy. That guy can be a real pest because he can bring anything over to you. Any local enemy can be yours. And there you go. There's a zap. We can get zapped by those electricity. So you're going to want to attack most of these more dangerous mobs from above. Why from above? Because if you attack a tank from below, it's going to spew burning oil on top of you. If you attack any of the Heesey from below, like the Heesey executive, the Heesey manager, basically the boss, he's going to drop those Heesey right on top of you. That and the fact that most Heesey when they fire or some Heesey when they fire, like the Grenadier, their missiles drop down. So they shoot in an arc and they head down. You're always going to be want to attack above to lower positions and make sure that you have a clear path always to escape. Digging is essential in here. If you don't have digging in Heesey base, get yourself to the side, get yourself to the side of the base and try to track down as quickly as you can. If you don't have digging, don't even try to take this place on. In fact, most of the time taking this place on head on and trying to get through every little nook and cranny of it is not the greatest of ideas unless you have a really good setup, something that you can depend on. So this is another one that it's sort of protect yourself, go slow, get to the bottom in the safest way possible, and don't try to pick any fights. This is one of the healers. I'm going to try to get him to do a healing bolt. What you would try to do is hurt one of these guys. Like if I could hurt this tank a tiny bit. Right now I have more hatred on, so I don't think he's going to do any healing for him, actually. I'm not even sure if he heals tanks. Yeah, normally he would shoot a healing bolt at that guy and we would be able to get healed from it. We'd be able to stay in between where the he where he is and the enemy he's trying to heal is. 
A healing bolt will hit us and make us feel better. These guys, I'm not giving them a chance to shoot, but when they shoot, they shoot white lasers that reflect. So what you're going to want to do is like you do with any of the other enemies that shoot first and then dodge. Let it shoot and then start dodging as you see it shooting. As you hear the sound for it to shoot, that's when you, you know, levitate up or drop yourself straight down. There's always a little bit of a delay. Now for damage, you're going to want to have something that's doing close to 200 to 300 damage per shot and a relatively rapid pace if you can get that. If you can get a really fast paced weapon with less damage, great. Of course, freeze always works wonders in this area because if you can freeze guys, you can manage to get away from them, you can manage to stall them, and they can't shoot you when they're freezing. Another thing, they can't shoot you when they're on fire, at least that's supposedly what happens, but I'm telling you right now, I've run into situations where I've been on, I mean, they've been on fire and they still shot at me. At least it seemed like that was what's going on. Other things that you can do is if you have, if you have accelerated homing and a rock, for instance, that would be very good because you can just kind of throw those rocks out there and they bounce everywhere they need to go. You can kick them around. Or if you have te uh, telekinetic kick is very useful in this area because you can aim the the objects that you find at other guys use the hazards to your advantage try to blow up guys from far away by hitting the hazards that are there the explosive containers the boxes the propane tanks so you're going to want to use everything in the environment to your advantage digging is probably the biggest advantage that you can have it's the same thing on any level if you can't dig the level is going to be infinitely more difficult, but especially here because if you can dig in Heasy Base, you can make a lot of hiding spots. Even if you don't have the ability to dig through metal, even the ability to dig through snow is going to be important because you can carve out little places for you to hide inside the snow. It's an extremely valuable thing to be able to just duck back into a small space and to be able to attack from there. Jump out, attack, hide, you know, basically the normal stuff that you would normally do. Another thing that you want to be aware of is that in this area, you're not looking for resources. You, you might be able to find wands. A lot of times you can find decent potions. But other than that, unless you find the drill, you're not really finding any gold except for the monsters that you kill. This is a very resource poor biome. It's not going to have gold for you in here. This is not the place to get gold. If you need gold, you either needed to get it up in coal pits or you really are going to have to start killing some of the enemies and grabbing the gold as best you can as for perks you're especially going to want fire immunity if you can get it here any of the other immunities are great as well but especially fire immunity and if you can find any of the protection sort of perks that are there anything that repels bullets slows down uh projectiles and things like that those are the must sort of things that you're going to want if you can find other perks that can help you to do damage those are also useful in here but mainly you're going to want to be protected as much as you can in hisi base from the environment as well as from the different enemy types so make sure that again you research these enemies thoroughly know what sort of damages they do so that you can pick your perks wisely Invisibility can be helpful, but there's so much that's going to stain you here, so much that's going to damage you here that a lot of times your invisibility, I would not rely on it here, especially. You're going to want things that are actually going to defend you or allow you to get through this faster, like additional damage or damage resistance or reflection. Those are the things that you want to be focused on to get through this as safely as possible. And again, we're not here to collect resources. We are here to get through this and get to the Holy Mountain so that we can have more stuff available to us, more perks available, more wands, more spells, and to get us down to the next biome, which is the jungle, which is going to have plenty of resources for us to get. There's a great area inside of there to get potions and wands. There's so much down there. This is one of these that we just need to survive this. So don't waste time. Just get yourself through Heasy Base safely and get on to the next area. Okay, that's pretty much it for the Heasy Base. It's one of the areas that a lot of people get very frustrated with. In fact, it's an area that I like to go and get revenge on when I'm done with my run. But you can get through it. You can function through it. Creep down the sides. Don't forget, though, 
go to the the spell shop go to the eye room make sure you go to these areas if you can if you don't have the digging to get you to the eye room it, but you have the teleport juice you can get there that's great but if you can't get to that room then yeah it's it's gonna kind of make the run a little bit more difficult but if you take advantage of everything that's available to you in the hisi base with the special rooms you will have a lot better chance at surviving through the jungle okay that is it for me today guys thank you so much don't forget to like and subscribe put your comments in there and we'll be getting to the jungle my favorite biome next week the jungle thanks so much a and youtube you're up